All right, morning, y'all. We're going 91 Firebird 3.1 V6. I'm doing the distributor replacement on this. Uh, it's going to be the part three. So everything is basically now in reverse order as what you did when you took everything off. So the first thing we're going to start with is that little bracket I was telling y'all about on the manifold. That one there slips in just like that so this one will go on and then we'll start down there at the smog pump get that taken care of and then uh, go up from there uh, I was also wanting to let y'all know if I haven't already that I went ahead and did replace the plugs and the wires in this car. Um, so I know what the culprit was with the number one cylinder with the plug wire when the little uh, metal uh, prong piece inside the boot had slipped off. Is that whoever replaced the plugs and wires on this once before, they did not add the anti C's, the boot anti C's. That stuff there, you can get it at your local AutoZone O'Reilly's. You might get some at Walmart. But they didn't put this stuff on the boots. And that's what caused the little prong piece to uh, pop off. Being dry, it's hard to get off. And once you pop it off, the little metal prong stays on the spark plug. Now spark plugs run. Uh, as well, the plug wire can't be used so went down got all that replaced put any C's on the plugs and the wires it's for the actual plugs itself for the threads so that way it's easier to get off next time they don't seize up inside the head and taking a chance of uh, breaking the plug off or end up stripping out the uh, threads so all that's good and covered now so the next thing we need to do is go ahead and just put everything back together and then I'm going to show y'all how to go ahead and set your timing a matter of fact I uh, found my timing light last night so number three part three <laughs> good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and pause y'all and let me go ahead and get this installed if y'all don't really remember on how to put everything back which I hope that you do <laughs> I hope you do remember but if not this video is going to help you out putting everything back especially if um, this bracket here that I pulled off that goes down here and hooks to the top of the uh, smog pump I know that bracket there kind of gets a little bit tricky at times but um, other than that everything's pretty much self-explanatory so if you have any issues or anything, you can refer to this video and see how everything's put back. So, I'll be right back. Alright, so that little bracket that I was telling you all about is back on. I'm going to go ahead and take you off the stand real quick. Alright. I finally found out how to work that dang stand now. <coughs> to where I can actually get y'all propped up where y'all can actually see something so got this bracket here installed so the next thing to do is lift up the smog pump and get that one hooked in
I'm gonna make sure that big on clip too gets up there. Get that hose put back on it. Finally. All right. See, I did just press the tab. And find the long bolt. goes all the way to the bottom. And then next is that bracket, other little bracket. gonna be this little guy right here this one uh, a little bit tricky to get back on especially when you walk away from it for uh, a few days because that has to go just like that I think yeah goes in there just like that so just remember when you put that in there that the round side goes out also kind of leave the uh, smog pump bolt just a little bit loose so you can kind of help slide it back and install the little bitty bolt that goes down there on it. And then your other two little nuts that go on there. I think 
13s or 17s or something. I don't remember what they were. down the small pump. Fifteens. And then the next is going to be, I believe, the alternator. This one here is a little tricky to get into a little bit, but it will go.
always had problems with this bolt here not wanting to slide too good all right so if you have issues getting that bolt in <coughs> that bracket that's sitting back behind this that's hooked onto the alternator is you may have to loosen it up a little bit and may have to adjust the bracket just a little and the bolt will go it back in so and i would actually just kind of loosen just kind of leave this one loosen a little bit because you will have to put the other bracket in here in the uh, tensioner oh, yeah, we already got that. And of course don't forget this bolt that's on the back side of the alternator which is that little other bracket that's hooked onto the manifold I wouldn't tighten it fully down just yet. Got a long bolt, which goes through here. Mm. Got the short bolt. That's gonna go up top right here to the alternator. Of course, you got another long bolt, which is going to go down here at the bottom. And if I'm not mistaken, these are 10 millimeter. Don't over tighten them. Uh, 
Now you can tighten up your alternator. Plug your connectors back in. Double check that down there. Alternator wire up brown. Okay, so got that done. Now, don't forget about your EGR tube. May have to bend it back. I don't have to worry about replacing the gasket because I've already replaced it. It's still brand new and there ain't really any miles on it. So and I think you went that way. Thing kind of gets a little tricky at times.
we don't want to over tighten these either. Okay, so got that part done. Now it's just time to hook up the uh, smog pump pulley. <coughs> And these are also 10 millimeter. I'm kind of doing this video all at kind of almost all at once, but I'm getting ready to pause it here in a second. There's the sweet spot. I'm going to take a wrench and just kind of I actually probably take a screwdriver or something and slip in there or you can just wait until you put the belt uh, wait until you get the belt put in, back on but I'm not going to wait until I put the belt back on I'm going to try to do it with a uh, screwdriver one of the screwdrivers at least try to block one in enough to where I can actually just tighten them up. So confusing sometimes. Thank you. 
just enough to the top. I mean, like I said, you don't have to go freaking grill on them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and polish y'all for a sec. All right, I'm back. All right, I'm going to get the belt put on. What I like to do on this one is start at your uh, bottom pulleys, and uh, you'll have to wrap, go down at the bottom pulley, wrap around the water pump, and come back around the smog pump. And then, once you do that, then you can come around underneath the uh, tensioner, and then all you'd have left to do is put the belt on the alternator, which is the easiest that I have found to put this belt on the other way. Granted that you don't slip off. They didn't put enough uh, bolt really as a grip. Make sure it's your belt on straight. Make sure it's lining up with the grooves on all pulleys. Just do that. Just trying to go back and double check, make sure everything's on. <coughs> All right. Now we got that far. Now the fun part. Be right back. All right, so make sure that you don't forget to hook up your uh, throttle cable over there. All right, next is hooking up the battery. And you need your timing light. Okay, I've got the uh, Actron style part number cp 7527 all right it's a pretty dang good timing light i mean it's cheap it's affordable it's not highly expensive um but to get the job done it does it so that's all i'm needing it for i don't really need all the high tech time and light and all that stuff i mean that does just as good um but you'll see in this video all right let's go ahead and get the battery hooked in positive side first
there if you didn't. Also remind you that I have already disconnected the computer wire for the timing over there. Alright, so if y'all can bear with me real quick. If you know how to hook up a timing light, then you can just pretty much just void this part. But this is actually just showing people on how to hook up a timing light. If they don't know how to hook one up and never used one before. Getting ready to show you. Move me. Alright. This here is your clamp. Make sure that you hook it down here over here on the cylinder one on the plug. And when you do this, make sure that it is facing cylinder one. I mean, it's still gonna read. I think that's how I had it once before. Make sure that your wires don't get in the way of anything turning when you go to start the vehicle um, or anything like that. That's the last thing you'd really want because that's going to turn into a bad day, especially if you just bought a timing light and not paying attention to what you're doing. Go ahead and hook up your positive. Red goes to red. Black goes to black. Okay. Just like that. Put your timing over here. Get this wire moved out of the way. You got a good connection down here. Seven a hell of a time. Pause you real quick. Okay. So I finally got my wires hooked up. Black goes to black, red goes to red, positive and negative. And then you got your uh, wire. I just ran mine just kind of back behind. I've got my uh, plug over there hooked to the number one cylinder, facing number one cylinder. All right, so in this step, all you need to do is go in the car.
hopefully she'll start. Hopefully this actually fixed the problem. I'm actually kind of nervous because I don't know. It's acting like it's wanting to. Hang on a minute. Could be out of time. And I'm hoping it's not 180 degrees out of time. So, what I am going to do is I am going to pull the cap real quick. Okay, so what I've done was I went ahead and disconnected the battery. I'm going to let it sit here for about 30 minutes. Kind of give it time to clear off but as you can see there it is all right so i know my rotor is in there uh well okay well i know that the uh distributor is meshed with the cam gears okay or the the cam so rotor is turning and I know that my distributor is sitting in there. And I know that I had, uh, that I put the distributor uh, in time. So it should fire. So what I'm going to do is, since I got that disconnected, is I'm going to plug my computer wire back up and see what happens then. And then if it uh, fires up, then what I'll do is then I'll unplug the wire and then set the time on it. I'll see if that works. Hopefully if it works. Alright y'all. That still did not fix the problem. Uh, sounds like it may be out of time. Probably is. I just got to figure out where. So when I do. I'll be making a, another video. Probably. So. Uh. Only thing I know to do is probably turn turn everything else turn everything back over by hand and see if my rotor is going to be pointing back at cylinder one. I mean, y'all seen what I done? Um, done everything correct that I know. I've never had timing i mean well i've had timing issues before and i fixed timing issues and got the vehicles back up and going i mean heck i've rebuilt the motor in my truck so i had to deal with the timing in it and it runs good so i don't know on this one here i've seen a lot of people that's been about 180 degrees out of time that's almost kind of what it sounds like and what it's doing so I may end up having to pull everything back off and figure something out. I know my plug wires are all in the correct order. I know that for a fact. Because um, it's 135 and then 246. And so I've got everything in the correct firing order also on the distributor. So... I have no idea right now, so I'll be cutting it short today, looks like, damn it. Alright.